I consider myself to be a pretty decent artist. Um, I'm not by any means as great at, as bleh, I'm not as great at art as my sister is um, because she covers a whole realm of medium. She can paint, she can draw, she can design, she can sculpt. I can do a couple of those things reasonably well. My main area of, I'll call it expertise, but it's hardly that, is pencil and paper, pen and paper, just sketch work, drawing work. Um, I'm not great with a paintbrush as far as creating a picture. I can paint a room pretty well. Uh, but is the fact that I'm good at art, at least drawing pictures and creating characters, is uh, sometimes intimidating to my students. I don't broadcast the fact that I'm good at art until now. It's not like I say, oh, I draw such good pictures, everybody else is inferior to me because they can't draw that well. That's not what I say. But we're in the middle of a project right now that we're going to continue today um, where I'm having the students write a poem and then they're putting just a single picture uh, of their poem. We're, we're doing a poem about an animal. So they all had to pick an animal that they wanted to write about and at the end of the poem there's going to be a picture of that animal. A lot of them are eager to draw the picture but then when the time comes to actually do it they're like oh can I look a picture up online can I trace it on my computer screen can I do this can I do that can we cut out a picture and glue it on no I want you to draw the animal based on what you know it looks like and that intimidates them and causes them to kind of regress from it regress sure um because their picture isn't going to be what they feel is as good as something I would do or as something as what their classmates would do. And I only just recently realized a connection between the kids that are willing to draw and the kids that aren't willing to draw. And it's handwriting. Because people who think they can't draw typically get caught up in the I can't create something from nothing but if you can write words you can draw a picture because drawing a picture is no more than a series of lines in a specific order and that's exactly what letters are when you're writing them so to to say you can't draw and you can write is false um you may not be able to draw well, or to have, if you're drawing a face, to have everything proportional, because that takes a certain amount of practice and skill and, you know, adjustment. But you can draw a decent picture without having it look f photograph quality. Um, and the problem I'm seeing is that more and more students have absolutely abysmal handwriting. There's, as far as I'm concerned, there are two methods to handwriting. One is the Danelian method, and one is the ball and stick method. Danelian is a method of making letters in order to uh, make them also in cursive and then connect them effectively. The ball and stick method is the more recent one in which almost every single letter is made with literally a circle and a line um, in some capacity or another. But I hate that method, but I also am not a strong advocate for the Danelian method either. I'm of the method of, this is what the letter looks like, now make it. Like, I don't understand why that's a hard thing to do. So, okay, are you coming or not? This guy needs to figure out what the heck he's doing. Thank you. Um, to his credit, he can't see out the back window right now. But, so the ball and stick method is lazy, and I talked about laziness last week, and I don't like it because it's lazy. 
because it encourages students to make it as simple as they possibly can and it tends to be sloppy and spaced poorly and not on a line and not straight and not neat and every letter is the same size or every letter is a different size so that's annoying because the problem is this method is taught early on and then never expanded to show the students how to go from that easy method at the kindergarten first grade level into a more advanced method in second grade or third grade and then they get to me in fourth grade and I'm stuck teaching handwriting that should have been done in second grade. Um, you can read into that as much as you like or not. But the more I think about it, the more I realize that my students who have some of the worst handwriting are also some of the least artistically inclined because they can't do letters and shapes. They don't have that method. They can't draw a line with a purpose or a segment or a, a squiggle with a purpose of going from one spot to another. And that's what drawing is, is taking lines from one spot to another with purpose and accuracy. And they don't have that skill. So part of me wants art class to come back in schools, specifically our school, so students learn how to actually create shapes and images and whatever else is involved with a purpose and with accuracy so their handwriting makes a comeback as well because handwriting is just another form of art. Calligraphy. People pay calligraphers bunches of money to create stuff for them. Uh, specifically, wedding people will have calligraphers address their envelopes. We addressed our own envelopes. If I had the time, I could do some pretty fancy calligraphy too. It's a valuable skill, mostly because people don't value handwriting anymore. And I'll admit, my handwriting is not the greatest, especially like when I'm writing a check or something. Which, again, not a skill that a lot of people use anymore. But, it just, excuse me. It's just uh, a connection that I made recently between handwriting and art. And um, how my students connect the two, or are connected to the two, without necessarily realizing it. See you this afternoon.